So filters are linear time invariant systems. This means that they fulfill the following properties. If f of x of n is our filter function of input signal if x of n, then we have linearity. So for two signals x1 and x2, if we filter, if we apply this filter function on the sum of these two signals, is the same as applying the filter to the first signal and adds to the filter of the second signal. Yeah? If we have a factor of a, so if we are filtering a multiplication of the input signal with um, a factor a, this is the same as to filter first the signal and then multiply with the same factor a. So which means that we can draw out sums and factor out of our function. And it's also time invariant. So if a y of n is equal to the function or filtering function of x of n, then we have for a delay of uh, n0, so y of n plus n0, this will be the same as filtering our signal x at time n plus n0, which means that our function stays the same no matter when we apply it. So FIR filters, the finite impulse response. So a simple finite impulse response filter, an FIR, has a difference equation like the following. With x of n is the input of our, our filter and y of n is the output of our filter. So here we have x of n, here we have y of n and we have the sum and going to 0 to capital L, so we receive this b of m times x of n minus um, m. So observe that this is the convolution of the signal x with b of n. And here the b of m are the coefficients of the filter or its impulse response. These are commonly also referred to as steps because the system can be viewed as tapping a delay line as seen in the picture uh, below. So the difference equation is also how usually filters are implemented in MATLAB, Python, and other programming languages. So a typical block diagram of a finite impulse response filter is shown here. So we have our input signal, this is the output, we have our delay blocks, we have this multiplication, we have these additions, and we have here this uh, block diagram of FIR. Observe that here the blocks with Z to the power of minus 1 are implemented with a delay by one sampling interval. So it's not a multiplication with z to the power of minus 1 as we would do in the z domain. So after the first delay block c to the power of minus 1, here we will have x n minus 1. And after the second delay block, we have x n minus 2 and so on. So each delay block memorizes the value from the left for one sample clock cycle and releases it to the right at the next sample clock cycle. Hence, they delay um, samples by one sample clock cycle. So the, D, the Z transform of our difference equation of our convolution, so here we have our convolution, so if we um, apply the Z transform, we will have this here with uh, this result. So now we can compute the transfer function. So we will divide output in the Z domain by the input in the Z domain. And that is the transfer function defined as the output divided by the input. And we end up with this equation here. So this is the transfer function, the output divided by input, and is given by here. And we have here, we can observe that this is the Z transform of the coefficients B of M. So this is the Z transform of the impulse response of the FIR filter. So now we can obtain the frequency response so that we can see which frequencies are attenuated and which are not from our transfer function of the filter if we replace Z by e to the power of j omega. So what we are doing here, we have our transfer function in the z domain, and we want to have a frequency response. We will replace z by e to the power of uh, j omega, and we will have this sum here. And since e to the power of j omega is a complex number, our frequency response is also complex. So hence, 
is a complex number for each frequency capital Omega. Usually it is plotted as magnitude plot and a phase plot over frequency. So its magnitude tells us the attenuation at each frequency and the phase, its phase shift for each frequency. So using these two plots or two properties, we can design our filters with desired properties. For example, um, uh, a stop band at given frequencies and MATLAB and Py, Python function to generate magnitude and phase uh, plot for a transfer function or signal. We can use a uh, Z as we already uh, used before. Oh, I recommend if you want to go deeper into the frequency response of filters and a bit of a revision of um, uh, filters in the, um, you can take a look at the Guitars AI GitHub on the multi-rate signal processing notebook number three, the frequency response. There are also some video tutorials and uh, there you can take a look. Um, so there will be some uh, examples on how to obtain the frequency response of a, a black box system using noise, um, using the sweeping sinusoid, so frequency response in relation between the Z-transform and DTFT, examples, uh, revision on cascading filters, and also here there is a revision about the idea low-pass filters, uh, frequency response, impulse response, delay so you can take a look at guitars ai github at multi-rate signal processing notebooks and tutorials we've seen the finite impulse response filters but there is there are also the infinite impulse response filters the iir filters so their difference equation is given by this equation here so you can take a look at the um, book from uh, Professor Oppenheim, Discrete Time Signal Processing, the chapter 6 in the edition from 89. And here we see we have two convolutions. And we can observe the feedback from the output Y back to the input in this sum. Um, I also observe that the feedback part starts with a delay of R equals to 1. So this is because we want to avoid the so-called delayless loops. We cannot use the value y of n before we computed it. So again, this different equation is the usual implementation of features using MATLAB, Octave, or Python. So this following in a picture here shows the corresponding block diagram of our filter. So here we have our input, we have delay blocks, have these multiplications, we have these additions, here we have this output and we also use the delayed versions of the outputs like with feedback here. So this is the block diagram of I IR filters, infinite impulse response. So again here the boxes with z to the power of minus one symbolize a delay of one sampling period and the triangle symb symbolize a multiplication with the factor written next to it. We can uh, simplify this structure by combining the summations and then we have uh, this kind of uh, block diagram. So we're combining these summations here and we end up of, with this block diagram here. We have input, output, this is our feedback, the delayed versions of the outputs. So we also have the delayed versions of the input this sum here and we have this block diagram. So the Z transform of this um, difference equation here, so it's given by this equation here. So now we are now in the Z domain. Uh, observe that MATLAB and Octave and Python uh, SciPy signal L filter are defining the coefficients um, with uh, opposite signs then uh, we do, and also uh, Professor Oppenheim and Schaeffer are defining. So you can take a look at the help of a, a filter, the help of SciPy signal, L filter in, in Python and to see how, the, how they define the coefficients, but they are defining with opposite signs um, compared to what we and Professor Oppenheim are doing here. So 
to obtain the transfer function uh, we first need to move the y of z uh, to the other side so we have uh, this equation here so we have a y of z x of z and then we take the transfer function dividing the output um, between uh, dividing the output from the input and here we have the resulting transfer function so we have this sum here this and divided by this sum here one minus this sum here so observe that with the help of the z transform we're able to find a closed form solution for the transfer function even though we have a feedback loop in, in um, feedback loop in our system so this is a very big advantage for the z transform and here we can see that we will obtain a polynomial in the denominator of our transfer function and hence pulse pulse uh, and the future can potentially become unstable yeah when we have poles in the transfer function so we have um, in the denominator we have poles so there is the chance that uh, it can become unstable the zeros of this denominator polynomial become the poles of the transfer function so if these poles are all inside a unit circle we have a stable future so this shows that we just need to design our coefficients um, in such a way that the poles are always inside the unit circle for stability We will now take a look at the combined FIR and IIR structure used in the Python function L filter. So since a delay is a linear operator, we can shift it after summation and we can combine the delay chain for the FIR and the IIR part. So this will reduce memory requirement for an implementation and leads to the following structure. So we have here our input, our output, we have our DLA blocks here combined for the FIR and the IIR part and here we have the multiplications with coefficients so this is the A coefficients so A1, 2, 3 and 2A and minus 1 and here we have our B coefficients B0, B1 until B and minus 1 now let's take a look into an example so if we go back to our simple example of an exponential decay signal and now we'll show how to implement it so we'll just need a system with a pole at the position p and if we look um, in the equations difference equations uh, before we obtain by setting the p0 uh, to 1 and a1 here equals to p so then we will have x this is 1 so this is p here uh, y of n then there is a delay here by z uh, to the power so this a delay by one sample in here a1 is equal to p and then we will have this equation here so this is uh, 1 so this is the p0 times x of n plus p this is a1 equals to p and the delayed version of the input by one sample so here you can see that x of n is the unit pulse if the x of n is the unit pulse the output is the exponential decaying sequence like we've seen before which is an infinitely long impulse response hence the name infinite impulse response we can also see this equation in the form of a block diagram so we have our input and we have our output there is a delay by one sample so here we have y of n minus 1 then we will multiply with a1 equals to p so this is equals to p then here we have p times y of n minus 1 so we have this part here this addition and this part here and this is our output so can also compare with the Python implementation block diagram in the case that p0 is equal to 1 and a1 is equal to p so if we take this and we go to the z domain by applying the z transform 
you have the Y, capital Y of C, it will be the capital Y of the Z transform of the input signal plus P, this is our pole, times C to the power of minus 1 times Y of Z. And from here, we can have our transfer function, so we're dividing the output by the input, and we have this 1 divided by 1 minus P times Z to the power of minus 1. So in this structure, we can see now the feedback loop. So observe that this is the same as the Z-transform of our exponential series we've seen before. This means that when we transform this back to the time domain, we will obtain an exponential function, which is the filter's impulse response. So this confirms what we just saw by using an impulse response in the time domain for our filter. So the result of the inverse Z transform of our transfer function is in fact 1 with this P to the power of 0, P to the power of 1, to the power of 2, and P to the power of 3, and so on. We can see here how to use the function L filter to obtain the impulse response of um, this IIR filter. So we are importing SciPy signal to use this L filter function. We are importing matplotlib by plot to plot. So here we are defining this uh, unit pulse as the input x of our signal. So we have a vector full of zeros and with a one at uh, x equals uh, n equals to zero, and b and a are the um, same vectors we used before and now we'll have the output we're filtering this uh, unit poles with the coefficients of our filter b and a and we have here an exponentially decaying function so we can see that the indeed this exponential decaying function so it's a sequence um, p to the power of n, this is for p equals to 0 0.9. In this way, we can also test more complicated infinite impulse response filters. So this exponential decaying impulse response again shows the stability of the filter, even what was expected because the pole of its transfer function in the z domain is placed at z equals to 0 0.9, which is in fact inside the unit circle so our future is stable so that's it for this notebook and we see each other again on the next one check you later